So recently around the shop and in the garden, I've had a problem with weeds growing up quite a bit too high, and I don't really want to use my weed whacker, and I came up with this idea of building a sickle from a shovel. Now, Carol from West Side Our Community provided me with this lovely broken shovel, and it's going to work out very well. The first step in all of this is to plan it and lay it all out. Now, clearly you can see here, I've got it laid out, but with a blade of about an inch and a half. Originally I was going to cut the handle off, but I'm going to incorporate the actual handle of the shovel as part of the handle. There's just going to be a bit of metal manipulation to do this. Now this is a great project for getting a little bit more skill with your angle grinder. Now you're going to need a zip disc and a face shield. You don't see me wearing a face shield, but I recommend you use a face shield and gloves and all that stuff. Now, why this is such a good project for using an angle grinder and building a bit of skill is because of all the round shaped corners and the dome of the shovel make it a little bit more tricky to cut it out, but it is very doable and I guarantee you when you're done, you're going to have a bit better skill using your angle grinder. Now, part of the problem I had with the project was I laid it all out in the front, but because of the rise of the center rib there, I'm going to have to actually cut it on the opposite side of the shovel. The reason why I chose the material for a shovel is because it's a higher grade steel. You probably noticed you've never been able to bend a shovel, you, they tend just to kind of crack. Well, this is because it's a similar steel, not the same, but a similar steel to like spring steel. And as you can see here, as I'm trying to bend it over, it always wants to kind of bend back. Now, how you can get around this is you can just bend it past its point where it's actually going to take the form. One of the problems that I did have with this project was because of the tip of the shovel kind of curved back on itself, I had to put a considerable amount of effort into making the whole blade relatively straight. Now I got it within a quarter of an inch straight and there's a bit of a curve in it, but I just have to remember as I'm using the tool, I just got to kind of curve my wrist just a little bit to keep that blade as I'm cutting. And I feel that it's more of a natural curve as I'm cutting anyways. You'll see more about that later as the video develops. Now, I had a bit of the end of the handle that was broken off sticking out, so I just had to trim that off. Now, I wouldn't recommend using a zip disc for this, but as you can see, it did work, and it gave it a nice little burnt brown finish on the end. Now, later we're going to wrap this handle with some leather, but before we do that, I've got to fold over the edge of the shovel from the other side of the blade. Now, the hammer that I'm using here is a Dead Blow Princess Auto hammer. It's a super cheap hammer. I think it was 10 or $15. But inside this hammer, it has a bunch of lead shot in it, so when you hit it, it almost doubles or triples the power that you're hitting something with, and the hammer doesn't tend to bounce off as much. Now, the shafting that I'm using is an offcut. You'll probably see it in one of my other videos. And this shafting is a one inch shaft that's just gonna help me fold over the inside handle of the metal to kind of make it look a little bit more factored. It worked out quite well, sticking it in the crook here, and then kind of rolling it a little bit with my hand just to tap it over, just to give it that oval kind of shape. And to me, it looks pretty factory actually, and I'm pretty happy with it so far. Now, digging through all of my junk, I found this really cool buffing wheel with one of those 20 packs that came from Princess Auto. Or for the American types, that would be, a, I think it's a Harbor Freight. And this, this is really working quite well. This buffing wheel here just basically ripped off all of the paint or powder coating or whatever it was. And it actually buffed the steel without leaving too much marks. And now I'm going to take a flap wheel that you saw earlier, and I'm just going to round these corners and give it the real good shape before I actually start to sharpen it. Now, if you do choose to build one of these, I highly recommend you don't sharpen it until you're the very, very last step, because we all know what happens if you sharpen it right away, and yeah, I mean, a lot of us get overzealous, and we try jumping out there and sharpening it, and then cutting with it before it's done, and then you got to deal with that sharp blade. Now, Speaking of sharpness, kind of what I'm going for with this is not a razor sharp finish. I'm just kind of going for something that's a little bit more like an axe. Now, if you've ever sharpened an axe, you're going to want it reasonably sharp, but not so sharp that the tip breaks off. Now, I'm going to jump down into the woodworking room and, oh, here's a tip of the day. If you're going to weigh epoxy, put a Ziploc bag over your scale so you don't wreck your wife's scale. I'm going with a two-part AB epoxy. I'll leave the notes down below if you're interested in what I'm using. It's not an ad or anything, but I've had a lot of success with the stuff I bought off of Amazon. Now, I am kind of whipping it here a little bit. This is just going to be a glue epoxy. And I'm basically just going to paint it on the handle 
And then I found an old leather belt that was kicking around the house, and I'm going to use that leather belt to wrap around the handle. Now, today that I'm narrating the video, I've actually been using this out in the yard for about maybe two, three days now, and I used it quite heavily. And the leather stuck on quite well with this two-part epoxy, and it's, I think it's a pretty permanent solution to the problem. Now, from here on in, it's pretty easy. Now, I've painted both sides of it with the two-part epoxy, and I'm just going to wrap the handle around it reasonably as tight as I can. Now, the key here is, is to make it look nice and not to have too much of an over overlap or a gap in between. I think the only problem that I had here was I had to call my lovely assistant to clamp it when I got to the end. Now, when I clamped it at the end, I used a bit of a parchment paper like you'd use for baking, and the parchment paper has a wax film on it so that the leather and epoxy didn't stick to the jaws of the clamp. And left over at the end, I luckily had a little bit of material left over that later I'm going to come back and I'm just going to cut it off with an Ofa knife. What I didn't show you in the video was, is a bit down the blade on the top part of the blade where it's not sharp, I did rub a bit of clear epoxy down it. And this is going to stop it later from rusting as I use it. Also, keep in mind as I'm building this, I'm a very large man, so I have quite large hands. So this tool here, if you're going to build, you might have a problem with the handle being a little bit too big and you may not want to put the leather on it. Hey, I'm sure you like this video and the cost of admission is clicking that like button. I really appreciate you sticking around to the end and this was a fun build and I hope you can build something cool like this too.